can get in. The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on preventing sexual offending involving children and young people. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would urge members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Michael Matheson. Thank you, President Officer. Ensuring the safety and well-being of Scotland's children and young people is a key priority for us all. As Cabinet Secretary for Justice, I am committed to a preventive approach to offending that involves children and young people. Our justice vision and priorities underlines our commitment to being led by the best available evidence. Our whole system approach to offending by young people is proven to work, driving down, down offending referrals by over 80% in the last decade. It involves emphasising timely and appropriate action to address crime and its causes through early and effective intervention, diversion and specialist support. This complements a broader focus on prevention, mainly through universal children's services as part of GIRFIC. But we will always need more specialist support and intervention for some young people. Last year, I commissioned research to analyse the increase in the other sexual crimes category of police recorded crime. This category had grown to become the largest category of sexual offences. 40% of recorded sexual crime is made up of other sexual crimes. The largest individual category ahead of sexual assault. There were suggestions that this was driven in part by an increase in cyber related offences. The research report recorded crime in Scotland, other sexual crimes 2013-14 and 2016-17 highlighted that the offences falling within the other sexual crimes category are often committed online. Importantly, online crimes are much more likely to have younger victims, mainly female, and younger perpetrators, mainly male. The research estimates that around half of the increase in all recorded sexual crime is due to this growth in other sexual crimes committed online. This includes behaviour such as communicating indecently or causing others to view sexual activity or images. Where these crimes are committed online, there is a disproportionate impact on our young people. Three quarters of victims were under 16 in 2016-17, with an average age of just 14. In a quarter of cases, both the victim and perpetrator were under 16. The research highlighted a significant gendered element across all other sexual crimes. In 2016-17, four in every five crimes of other sexual crimes were female, while the vast majority of perpetrators were male. On the 26th of September, alongside the research, the Solicitor General and I announced our intention to establish an expert group on preventing sexual offending involving children and young people. Earlier in September, Alison Dorolo had hosted an education summit. That event highlighted that cases reported to the Crown Office involving a sexual offence committed against a child by another child rose by 34% in the five years to 2015-16. As the Solicitor General highlighted, these disturbing and depressing cases can give rise to profoundly difficult as well as important decisions for prosecutors, both in terms of the criminal law and of the public interest. They have consequences. They have consequences for the accused, for the complainer, and for the witnesses. They have consequences for their family, and they have consequences for our society as a whole. And they have consequences whether or not criminal proceedings are taken. In recent years, we have come to understand more about the relationship between trauma, adverse childhood experiences, 
and further outcomes, including offending and imprisonment. There is also a growing body of evidence that one of the most significant factors in predicting whether a child will commit criminal offences in the future is contact with the criminal justice system at an early age. Prevention is undoubtedly preferable to prosecution, while recognising that for the most serious cases, prosecution will be required. We need to better understand why young people, predominantly males, are motivated to behave this way and how we can prevent sexual offending, minimising risk of harm and the number of victims. Considerable effort is happening across government already, including national campaigns around child sexual exploitation, our national action plan on internet safety and our equally safe strategy. But we need a fresh impetus, armed with the very best evidence and the most useful tools to prevent this type of offending. This expert group, with a focus on prevention, education, health and wellbeing and child protection, with a significant justice interface, will identify further steps needed to better tackle and ultimately prevent offending. So, officer, I'm pleased to announce that Catherine Dyer will chair the expert group. Catherine's background as Crown Agent and Chief Executive of the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service and her role in chairing the Independent Child Protection Systems Review means she is uniquely placed to lead on this vital work. She will ensure that the expert group examines the necessary issues, doing so with independence, rigour and with a fresh eye. I know she is very mindful of the existing policies, programmes and the interactions between existing systems. Officer, the expert group will bring together professional and academic expertise from across justice, education, child protection, health and the third sector. Their work will identify fresh actions to better prevent sexual crime involving children and young people and mitigate the harm it causes. The group will consider the implications of the recent research and other evidence and relevant data. They will conduct an assessment of existing policies, interventions and programmes. And they will look at the impact of wider, of wider societal and technological changes. The group will draw on lessons from preventative work on violence reduction and will link strategically with other developments across justice, education and health. I should point to the current good work already happening across the government or through partners that contribute to this particular agenda. For example, we are working closely with the children's sector to implement the actions outlined in both the Child Sexual, Ex Sexual Exploitation and Internet Safety National Action Plans. Health and wellbeing is at the heart of children's learning. Schools are supported through guidance on relationships, sexual health and parenthood education, which is an important part of the school's curriculum in Scotland. However, we know that in the modern world that we need to ensure that children and young people are provided with learning that fits with the ever-evolving digital world. As most of the Chamber will be aware, the Government, as part of its mental health strategy, has commissioned a review of personal and social education. The review is looking at the delivery of a whole area of subjects, including relationships, sexual health and parenthood across our primary and secondary schools. This commenced earlier this year and is expected to provide recommendations to ministers by the end of 2018. Equally safe, the Scottish Government's strategy for preventing and eradicating violence against women and girls has promoted a concerted effort from relevant sectors to deliver a holistic response to tackling violence against women and girls. It places a decisive focus on prevention whilst also ensuring that we have effective services for survivors and that perpetrators receive the strongest possible response. Over the next few weeks, my Cabinet colleague, Angela Constance, will publish a delivery plan to focus further our efforts. This will build on our strong progress 
in strengthening legislation and building the capacity of these services. But I will also recognise and focus action around preventing violence requires the underlying attitudes and inequalities that create the societal conditions for that violence to be eradicated. We're, inv we're investing in programmes that promote internet safety and explore the online behaviour of young people. This includes Police Scotland's Choices for Life peer mentoring programme, the Mentors in Violence Prevention programme, Stop It Now Scotland, and SACRO's Challenging Harm Online Images and Child Exploitation programme. In addition, President Officer, we are funding uh, from the Violence Against Women and Girls Justice Budget to support Rape Crisis Scotland to deliver a sexual violence prevention programme across a number of local authorities in Scotland. This work is vital in helping to deepen understanding of young people around issues of consent and healthy relationships. The remit of the group extends to all sexual offending and harm involving children and young people. This includes where children are either the victim or the perpetrator, and sometimes even both, and there will be a particular focus on cyber-enabled offending. The remit will not focus on adult perpetrators of sexual violence. The criminal justice system and multi-agency public protection arrangements will remain at the core of protecting the public from sexual offences where the perpetrator is an adult. The expert group will map existing approaches, raise visibility, identify gaps and explore best practices including insight from other countries. Young people must be involved in this work in a meaningful way. We will invite the Scottish Youth Parliament, Young Scott to be in part of the expert group and YouthLink can provide an insight from a young person's perspective drawn on the successful approach we've had with No Life's Better Life's model. Given the research outcomes, a gendered analysis will be a significant component. When it comes to cyber-enabled sexual offences, it's clear that young women and girls are predominantly the victims, while young men and boys are predominantly the perpetrators. The expert group will be focused and time limited, and it's expected to conclude its work by the end of March 2019. A preliminary meeting with a number of third sector organisations to scope membership took place on the 30th of October. My thanks to Rape Crisis Scotland, Stop It Now, NSPCC, Bernardo's and others, including COSLA and Police Scotland for supporting these discussions. We want to draw on all available expertise. That will include the Coalition of Care Providers Scotland, Rape Crisis Scotland, Stop It Now, Child Protection Committee Scotland, the National Child Protection Leadership Group, Education Scotland, the Scottish Children's Reporter Administration and a nomination from the Chief Medical Officer. Police Scotland and the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service will also be part of the group. We will invite the Children and Young People's Commissioner to nominate a member. Dean Officer, we will also draw on academic expertise from the specific areas being considered. The Chair will have the flexibility to invite others such as the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre and Zero Tolerance to augment the work of the group. Dean Officer, I hope members will welcome the direction being taken through this expert group and will support the focus on a preventative approach to reducing the number of children involved in sexual offending both as victims and as perpetrators. Thank you very much. We'll now take questions, starting with Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I first of all say that I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of his statement. This is an extremely important issue and one that challenges just about everybody who works with young people out in our communities now. And there's no doubting, and I think the Cabinet Secretary has covered a wide range of approaches that are being taken at the moment. And I'm particularly glad to welcome the pulling together of all these things with an expert group to look at how we go forward and how we actually ensure that we're doing the right things, the things that will make a difference um, to the young people that are affected by this. I think establishing an expert group is the right way to go, and I particularly welcome the appointment of Catherine Dyer to chair that. I think she is very appropriately qualified to do it, um, and I really will look forward to, to the findings of this group and what they have to tell us. 
I've got two small questions um, with regards to it. First of all, um, the involvement of young people, which is absolutely critical to this, but there's no mention of families. So can I just ask the Cabinet Secretary that we ensure that families are also involved in a meaningful way because obviously they have a lot to contribute and it's really important that we hear how they cope with their young people and, and how they can get involved in, in preventing the sort of experiences that they encounter. Um, the second one is, can the Cabinet Secretary just tell me if the expert group will be engaging with online service providers, particularly the social media, um, to ensure that we do have a robust approach to learning in an online digital world? Cabinet Secretary. So enough, so I'm very grateful for the comments made uh, by uh, the member. Let me pick up on the two issues which the member has raised. Uh, one is the involvement of uh, families. There will be scope for families who uh, have been affected by either having a member of the family, uh, a victim or a perpetrator, uh, and having some input into that process. Uh, what we're not doing is specifying the way in which that will be conducted. That will be a matter for the expert group to devise with, its, uh, with the uh, organisations who are supporting them and taking forward this uh, work. Uh, and that leads me on to the second point that the member raised in relation to engaging with online uh, service providers. Um, uh, we haven't specified that they must do so. However, I would find it very difficult uh, for the expert group to carry out this work without considering the role of uh, service providers and the role that they can play in helping to support uh, young people in uh, dealing with some of these issues. Uh, the member may be aware that the Scottish Government is already involved in a UK body which deals with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, service providers and we continue to have input into that uh, process at a UK level. But I've got no doubt that the Catherine Dyer and the expert group will want to consider uh, the nature of that engagement uh, as and when they consider it appropriate. But there is no doubt that online service providers have an important role to play in helping to address some of the concerns that are likely to be highlighted during the course of the expert group's uh, work. Claire Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer, and thank you to the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of the statement. The issues addressed by the statement are complex, and MSPs have increasingly raised concerns over sexual offending involving children and young people in the Chamber. We have seen a rise in sexual offences committed by a child against a child in recent years. And I welcome the Solicitor General's initiative in highlighting the consequences of this behaviour and today's statement. I welcome Catherine Dyer as the Chair of the Expert Group and wish her well in the work ahead. Could the Cabinet Secretary expand on the remit of the group? He says there will be a particular focus on cyber-enabled offending, and that is welcome as it is a significant contributor to the increasing offences, and it could be seen as an area which can be addressed with better education and information. However, it's also important that we focus on children and young people who display a greater degree of harmful sexual behaviour. And can he say a bit more about what work the group will undertake in this area? And finally, can he maybe comment on the start of the statement talks about the whole system approach to offending as working, and we've seen referrals down by 80%. Why does he feel this approach maybe isn't being so successful in the area of sexual offending? So, no, sir, um, let me, uh, I'm also grateful to the member for uh, welcoming the statement and the approach which we're taking in this, what is a very complex area, um, which is uh, developing and emerging very quickly as uh, technology develops and emerges as well. Um, uh, the remit has uh, been uh, published today as well, and I'm more than happy to send a copy of that on to the member, um, but it should be available within uh, SPICE. Um, which sets out in broader terms the, the remit of the expert group. Uh, but it's not limited to cyber. It will look at some of those wider issues, as I mentioned in the course of my uh, statement. The member also highlighted the issue about um, uh, dealing with the, and addressing some of the issues about uh, behaviours amongst young people where they may be exhibiting uh, behaviours which are a matter of uh, concern. And I think that's important in the, the uh, expert group will not just be focusing on cyber matters. It will be looking at that wider issue around, uh, around uh, young people, uh, both as victims and as perpetrators of uh, sexual crimes, uh, and looking at whether the measures that we have presently in place are appropriate. So a key part will be is mapping what we have in place at the moment, and also looking at whether they're effective and whether there are gaps in those existing arrangements that need to be addressed more effectively. So while there are gaps in dealing with picking up on some of those types of behaviours at an earlier stage and early intervention. And the member on her third point raised, raised issues around uh, the success we've had in tackling um, uh, youth offending, in particular the reduction in the number of young people who are referred on offences grounds to, uh, our, uh, to the children's uh, reporter system. I think one of the issues that we can see from the research that's published back in September 
is the identification of these types of offences, because very often they are taking place within a cyber environment, which is much more difficult to identify. Uh, and there's an issue about young people having an understanding and the need to report these matters where they have a concern, and also the way in which they are then investigated. The response that we've had in the past around the whole system approach has been much more about a practical intervention. Uh, and I believe that one of the areas that we have to get better at in this area is about making sure that young people are equipped with the skills in knowing what is unacceptable and being able to then seek support and assistance. Uh, because some of the cyber-enabled uh, types of sexual offences which we uh, are finding are not as visible as some of the other types of behaviour amongst uh, young people. And I think that's part of the challenge uh, which we face going forward. And I think that's part of the challenge that anyone is a parent with young children, young people, is that it's not necessarily about a perpetrator now uh, uh, coming into the house or into an environment to, uh, to, uh, to have an impact on a child, is that that influence can be exerted through their phone or through their computer uh, in their bedroom or at home. So it's not as visible, and in that sense, it provides greater challenges for our law enforcement agencies and also those who would intervene and be able to identify where risks are already starting to, identify, are already starting to emerge to then intervene at an early stage. Thank you. I appreciate this is a, a sensitive subject. Uh, I would just also draw the Minister's attention. There's 10 questions, if we can get through them. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that there's nothing inevitable about children and young people engaging in harmful sexual behaviour? And would he agree that edu the education that they receive on this issue should focus on more than just what's lawful and isn't lawful, but also what's healthy, safe and respectful? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I agree, uh, Signing Officer. I think what's important here is that we help to enable children and young people uh, to be able to have mutually respectful uh, and responsible and confident relationships. And a big part of the work that's been taken forward as a result of the review of the PSE approach within schools is to look at how we can make sure that that's been embedded much more effectively. I think part of the challenge here as well is ensuring that we have a much uh, better understanding of the risks that young people are exposing themselves to by those who are within our education system and within our wider public services and being able to help to support young people in addressing some of these issues uh, but also helping to uh, support young people in understanding what is that uh, that mutually respectful um, uh, uh, confident uh, responsible type of relationship what does that look like in the cyber world um, and how do you enable young people to understand that uh, and to be able to, uh, to have the confidence in exerting these types of responsibilities and that type of confidence. So uh, I agree with the member and I think an important part of the work uh, the review group will take for the expert group will consider is how we can embed that more effectively uh, within our education system. Liz Smith to be followed by Mary Fee. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, the Cabinet Secretary is quite right on page four in his statement when he says that the expert group will uh, consider the implications of research and other relevant data. Could I ask whether the expert group will actually look at the processes of collection of that relevant data? It was a point that was raised in the Education Committee when we looked at personal and social education that perhaps the data wasn't always as accurate as it might be. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I suspect that's an area which the expert group will want to give consideration to uh, because, as I've said, we want to take a, a preventative approach and to do that effectively, we need to make sure it's an evidence-based approach and data is absolutely crucial to making sure that that's a properly informed evidence-based approach. So I've got no doubt the expert group will want to give consideration to that. Mary Fee, followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement? Any steps taken to prevent sexual offending in children and young people are to be welcomed. And education, I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will agree, is a key role to play in this. The Equalities and Human Rights Committee, of which I am a member, recently carried out an inquiry into bullying and harassment in schools. And I was particularly alarmed to hear evidence directly from young girls of sexual harassment and bullying and sexual shaming in schools, and more alarmed a culture of acceptance among some of the pupils. Accurate recording of these incidents, support for victims, and zero, zero tolerance in our schools are all essential, as are training, support and guidance for all of our teachers. Can the Cabinet Secretary give a bit more detail of what specific steps he will take to ensure there's joint working across portfolios and sharing of good practice to counter the alarming evidence that we heard in committee? 
Cabinet Secretary. Absent officer, I'm aware of the work that's been taken forward by uh, the committee, which I think is very helpful in looking at some of these issues and shining a light on some of the issues around uh, bullying, because we're very clear as a government uh, that, we, uh, that uh, as a government we take the issue of bullying very seriously, uh, and we expect to our local authorities at an educational level to make, be making sure that they have appropriate measures in place to address these issues very quickly when they do arise, which is absolutely key to bullying, is early intervention uh, and preventing it from escalating. What we do expect, though, is for uh, all of our local authorities to have uh, anti-bullying strategies in place and for those to be effectively implemented uh, to prevent this type of uh, behaviour from uh, developing. I think, though, the, the challenge is that the nature of bullying in some ways uh, is changing uh, and the purpose for which some of the bullying is taking place is changing as well. Uh, and it's not just the bullying that traditionally may have taken place in the playground or in the school line. Uh, when I was at school, it's the bullying that can now take place online uh, uh, while someone's at home uh, on their phone or on a computer. I think that's part of the whole work that we're looking, we're taking forward as a national action plan around uh, uh, tackling issues about uh, equipping young people with the skills to manage and deal with these issues online. But I think importantly is also helping to educate parents and also our teachers and other support staff in recognising that, that cyberspace can be an environment which is actually uh, even more susceptible to bullying taking place uh, and what can be done to help to make sure that young people know that they need to report it as early as possible. And I've got no doubt the expert group will want to give some considerations to the existing arrangements we have in place in dealing with these issues uh, and how those can be improved uh, and developed going forward. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, as many in the Chamber will be aware, this is Anti-Bullying Week. Bullying is something too many of our young people still experience and may lead to some youngsters feeling pressured to take part in sexual activity, which they may or may not realise can constitute a sexual offence. What efforts are being made to tackle bullying of all sorts in our schools? And can I remind members I am the Education PLO in this capacity as well? Cabinet Secretary. Absolutely, officer. I'm conscious that the Deputy First Minister, Education Secretary, is here as well, so I better make sure that I get his uh, policy area right in relation to uh, bullying. But I, I do know that as a government, we have a, a very robust approach to the whole issue of tackling bullying. As I mentioned earlier in my response to Mary Fee, uh, we expect local authorities to have in place uh, developed and implemented anti-bullying uh, policies, uh, which should be reviewed and updated on a regular basis uh, in consultation with both parents and uh, with pupils. Uh, and an important aspect of that policy at a local level is thinking about bullying that takes place within the cyber uh, in, uh, space as well. And that will be an important element going forward. And I've got no doubt that the expert group will want to give some consideration to the existing policy framework that we have relating to uh, areas such as bullying. John Finney to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight and, and welcome the, the Green Party, welcome the, the proposals here. Cabinet Secretary, it's with regard to one small part of, of the remit, and uh, if I quote you correctly here, the remit will not focus on adult perpetrators of sexual offences. Now, given that the definition can sometimes be 16 or 18, can you say what regard there will be to that? Because a lot, of course, adult offenders themselves offended as, as juveniles, and we would want to capture as much information as possible. Secretary. Uh, uh, officer, this is uh, specifically uh, relating to the research which was uh, commissioned last year and published in uh, September, which was in relation to uh, young people um, uh, rather than adult uh, perpetrators. So it will not consider the actions and areas relating to uh, those who are perpetrators of, uh, of uh, these offences that are uh, over 18. It's very specific in looking at the needs of children and young people, uh, both as perpetrators and uh, victims, because this is an area where there's been a very significant growth. Um, and to extend it yet further, uh, in my view, uh, would lose focus on this very specific area that we saw uh, uh, in growth over the uh, last couple of years, and particularly the cyber nature uh, uh, element of it. So it's very specific on that particular age group. Um, uh, and as I mentioned in my statement, uh, the way in which we deal with uh, adult perpetrators um, of uh, sexual crimes is through our MAPRA arrangements and the uh, uh, other safeguards which we have in place. Uh, and they continue to be the way in which we uh, deal with these matters for uh, adult perpetrators of sexual offences. Alice Cole Hamilton, followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Following efforts by my party, the Scottish Government has committed to increase the age of criminal responsibility 
Serious sexual offences committed by those over the age of 12 should naturally be dealt with severely, but will the government consider using this legislation to ensure that children who commit very minor sexual offences in their early teens as a result of their immaturity aren't haunted by a criminal record of this nature for the rest of their life? And will it consider a limitation which will see such minor offences expunged from their records after a period of time? Secretary. Officer, the member is uh, tempting me to preempt the work of the expert group in looking at this particular issue. Um, as I mentioned uh, in my statement uh, and at several points, is that our key focus here is prevention uh, and preventing young people from becoming involved in this type of activity in the first place. And in doing that, we can reduce the number of perpetrators and importantly also the number of uh, victims. But as I also mentioned in my statement, um, uh, these actions do have consequences in a whole range of different ways and the dilemmas which our prosecutors uh, are facing as a result of this and that was very a very particular focus of the education summit uh, which was uh, uh, which was brought together by the solicitor general in which the deputy first minister uh, addressed uh, a number of weeks ago and i've got no doubt that the very issue that the member has raised is an area that the expert group will want to give consideration uh, given the uh, potential implications uh, that prosecuting young people at a young age uh, on these matters could have for uh, a large part of their life and their future uh, opportunities uh, going forward. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has confirmed that young people will be involved in the work of the expert group. Can he advise if there will be a direct opportunity for young people who have been affected by this offending to engage? And if so, will their voices help to develop services designed to support both the victims and perpetrators of these offences? Sign officer, it's crucial that young people do have an opportunity to participate in this process. And as I set out in uh, my statement, there's a number of youth-based organisations and those who uh, work with young people who will be participating in the expert group. Of course, uh, there is a role for those who are the victims of these types of crimes uh, to participate in that process. However, uh, that has to be managed in such a way as to recognise their uh, confidentiality and to make sure that they're confident in any participation that they may have within it. However, uh, that type of approach has been facil facilitated in the past, uh, looking at other uh, areas of policy where uh, victims have been able to participate in that process. And I've got no doubt the expert group uh, will want to engage with the youth-based organisations and looking to facilitate that type of engagement, but doing it in a sensitive way uh, that protects the, uh, the anonymity and also uh, the confidentiality that's necessary in dealing with uh, victims who have experienced such types of crimes. Finally, Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, regarding the welcome focus on prevention, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm whether the expert group will explore the option of taking the message directly into schools, as, for example, the excellent play Ballysong does as part of the No Lives Better Lives programme that he referenced? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, President Officer. And as I mentioned in my statement, one of the areas that I believe the expert group can give consideration to is the work that we have taken forward in relation to uh, tackling uh, violence uh, within our schools and amongst young people. So the No Nice, Better Lives campaign is part of it and the Ballet Song uh, play, which is very effective. I hope the members have an opportunity to uh, watch it. It's a very effective way of getting that message across to uh, young people alongside the work we do with the mentors and violence prevention and the work that we actually do with Medics Against Violence. There is a model in there uh, that's proven to be very effective uh, and I think there are lessons that can be learned there for working with young people in tackling issues around uh, uh, sexual offence. Thank the Cabinet Secretary and members. Apologies to Ms Mackay for not being able to get in. We ran out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, the next item of business is a debate on migration. Uh, we'll just take a few moments for the ministers and others to change seats.